Welcome to tutorial number 24 of the series Visual Effects for Games and today we are going to see how to create lasers. The lasers you are seeing are available in the asset store and in my Patreon, links are in the description. It's a package that comes with 9 laser prefabs and shaders and a lot of textures that will help you to customize them. And since these lasers took several hours to do, I will show you how you can get started and create a subject simple and cool like this. So let's see how we can do this. So first thing we want to do is to create an empty. I'm going to rename it to laser test 01. And inside that empty let's create a line in effects. So yeah, lasers are basically line renderers. And we can turn off cast shadows, receive shadows and dynamic occlusion. We don't need that, unless you want to create shadows from your laser. Anyway, as you may notice, we can assign a material, which we will see in a moment. Let me first talk about positions. A laser is composed of vectors, which is this array of two. And as you can see, if I start increasing the Z value of the second element, we are basically controlling the length of our laser. Use world position will basically move our element to their respective world position. And if we go to the respective parent of this laser, and start copying the values from X, then from Y and Z, which in the second element we will still use it as the maximum length of our laser, you will see that now it's using the world position of the parent and we are going to use this in a few moments. Anyway, now what really matters is the white. The white can control how thick our laser is going to be. And by the way, yes, you can add more positions. As you can see, you can control it in several ways, like this. But for the sake of this tutorial, we are only going to use two positions. Next thing is this curve, which is really useful. Let's add a key. This basically controls the thickness. So if I start decreasing the end of the curve, we will have a thin laser at the end as well. Now let's give it some color. And this is a gradient which I'm going to use this one. You can use anything you want, of course. And just for curiosity's sake, hand cap vertex will make the end of the laser round. As you can see in wireframe, it simply added three vertices. But we don't really need it. So let's jump over to Photoshop or to your image editing software, of course, where we can create a file with 500 by 500. And let's create a very simple texture just to show you a couple of stuff about the line render and lasers. Basically I'm painting the black ground to black and using this brush where I'm going to paint a white M shape. Something similar to this. And we want the beginning and the end to be almost equal. Just like this. Now I'm gonna paint some whiter fields in the middle. Yeah, just like this. And then with the erase tool I'm going to create these little depressions just to make it look more random. Now again with the brush we want to select a grey color and paint some grey areas. Yeah, just like this. Now we can double click the layer and give it some outer glow. Let's crop this texture, hide the black background and export to Unity. Once in Unity let's create a material and change the shader to particles additive. Assign the texture to the material and assign the material to the line renderer, just like this. And we can start seeing some cool stuff happening. Now let's control how much wide we want. I'm going to set this to around 1.8. And now as you can see there isn't much happening. So we are going to create a very simple shader that will allow us to move this texture in the X or in the Y. And I'm going to use Shader Forge, but you can obviously use the new Shader Graph from Unity. The ideas are the same, the concept is the same. And by the way, Shader Forge is free now in the Asset Store. So as soon as you open the Shader Forge, we can create a new shader and select Particle Additive just to get started. Alright, cool. So I'm going to change the sphere to a plane and turn off Skybox just like this and let's assign the texture that we have created to our main texture of the shader 
And now, as you can see, we don't have any transparency. We don't have the alpha. So let's add the multiply node and plug in the alpha from the texture and the alpha from the color. And simply plug in this multiply to the overall multiply. And here we go. We have transparency. Now, to make our texture move in the Y or in the X, we are going to need the time node and then we are going to need two values. One is for the X speed and the other is for the Y speed. Now, let's select an append node and let's multiply these two values with time, basically. And now we basically need to add this with the new V coordinates so it can get mapped into the geometry. So let's create an add node and a new v-coordinate node, connect them like this and then we can pass this information to the UV input of our 2D texture. So now let's press compile and nothing really happens because we need to insert a value in the x speed or in the y speed. And now we start to see the texture moving, which is great. Now let's go back to Unity and change the shader of our material to the shader we have created. I'm going to select the line render and down here we can control the speed we want. And also control the color intensity of our laser, as you can see. That's looking great. Now just a little trick for you guys, we can increase the X in tiling. It will basically increase our texture amount in the X and it also gives a different look. Give it a try. Alright, now let's go back to Shader Forge to make a small improvement because as you may notice the beginning and the end of our laser have these hard edges and we don't really want that and to fix that we need to create a mask basically and we are going to use two texture to the nodes one is for the mask frame basically for the whole texture and the other one is for when the texture is repeating and we want to add a little fade in and fade out from one texture to another Alright, so for the mask texture, we are going to need the information that comes from this add node. Basically, it needs to follow along the main texture. And now the main texture needs to be multiplied with this mask, just like this. And nothing really happens because we need to add the texture to the mask. I will show you in a moment how to create it. And as you can see now, it fades in and fades out between the repetition of the main texture. And this may be useful to you, in case your texture doesn't loop too well. In this case, I'm also going to add the same texture to mask frame. But you can use different masks. And we can connect the RGB to this multiply. Now, for the texture, we can open Photoshop or your image editing software, create a file with 500 by 500, paint the background to black, create a new layer with Ctrl Shift N, and paint this layer with white. Now we want to choose the selection tool, select 50 pixels in the left, and let's feather 10 pixels, and press delete. And we repeat this process for the other sides as well. Once we have done this, we hide the black background, and export this texture as a PNG to Unity. Once in Unity, let's add the texture we created to mask frame. And as you can see now, we have a fade in and a fade out in the beginning and in the end of our laser. You don't necessarily need to use the mask text, like I said. You can use it if you want. Now, if we want to spice up our laser, we can actually add a lot of effects in particle system to make this look even better. And just to give you a few ideas, let's create a particle system. Rename it to beam. Set the start speed to zero. We don't need shape, let's turn off that. We can set the emission to 2 and the start lifetime can be random between 1 and 1.5. Alright, now let's increase the size between 3 and 6, more or less. And let's create a nice fade in and fade out. The keys on top controls the opacity and we want to set this key in the middle, like this. Alright, nice. And now let's use a curve in the size of a lifetime, like this one. It's looking good. Let's move this beam to the beginning of our laser. And now let's choose some color. 
and I'm gonna go with some light blue and light aqua color or something like this. And here's a quick and simple idea for you. And now you may ask, what if we want to use the laser with our mouse? And I'm glad you asked it, because I'm going to show you in a very simple script how you can do it. So let's create a script, call it simple laser. And we don't need the start function, we can delete it. What we need for this basic script is a public camera. So we can basically calculate a ray from the fire point of our laser to where our mouse is. And speaking of fire point, we need a public game object called fire point. We also need a line renderer, so we can say where the beginning and the end is of the laser beam. And the maximum length that we want the laser to have. And for the sake of this tutorial, everything is going to happen in the update function. And the first thing we want to do is say that our line render, we're going to set the position of the vertex 0, the element 0, to our fire point position, just like this, which will allow the laser to follow the fire point. And let's just see how this is affecting the laser. Let's go over to the inspector and assign the camera. The fire point is going to be the laser itself and the line render and a maximum length of 80. Should be enough. Now if you press play, you will see that the laser is kind of messed up. And what's happening is that since the laser is not using world space, the fire point is going to be messed up because it's using local space. And as soon as you turn it on, the laser goes back to where it's supposed to be. And once we get out of play mode, what we need to do is do what we have done before, which is copy the values from the parent of the laser and turn on world space, just like this. And now, as you can see, if we move around, the fire point of the laser is always going to be updated. Thanks to that line of code that we have put in the update. Let's add a few more things. So, in order to know where the mouse is, we are going to need a ray cast it. And we are also going to need the mouse position, like this. And now we need to convert that mouse position, which is just a screen point. We need to convert it to a ray, just like this. And now we do a simple test. If the ray cast, which goes from the ray mouse dot origin to the ray mouse direction, and we output a variable called hit, and if that hit hits something, then our laser is going to be placed in that position. In other words, we are simply shooting a laser from an origin to a destination and see if it hits something. If it's going to hit something, then the end point of our laser is going to be placed in that position. And now we see if that hits something, so we use hit collider. And if it hits something, we want to set the element 1 of our line render to that hit point, which is a vector. Now let's press play just to see how this is working. And as you can see, the laser follows our mouse because the ray that we are shooting is hitting something, but as soon as it doesn't hit nothing, for instance if we point to the sky, the laser stays in the last position. And to fix that, we say that if the ray that we have shoot doesn't hit nothing, we want to create a variable called position that will hold a certain point with a maximum length of our ray mouse. And once we have that position, we can set the position of the element number one to that variable. Now let's press play just to see how this is working. And it works, it's looking great. And that's it guys, that's the very basic idea of a laser. You guys can do a lot of things, you guys can create new textures, can improve the shader a lot, the shader can do a bunch of things. And obviously with the script, you guys can give it some cool tweaks around. I mean, it's up to you guys, I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you like it, please subscribe, leave a like. And if you can, please support me on Patreon page. You can download a bunch of effects. I want to say a special thank you to all the patrons that have supported me in the last month. You guys rock. You guys are awesome. Really, thank you. And thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.